It's been a while since we've seen you. Let's catch up, obviously. Yeah, and what's I've gotten going on. more handsome since. You then. have yeah, gotten yeah. more. You know what? I'll be honest. At high definition, <laughs> it loves you some you. I think. Uh, what are you doing with your job search right now? Can you catch us up with where things are with you and get catching on with the team with the 2010 season? Um, personally, right now, I'm just working out, just you know, keeping myself in shape. And mm -hmm. uh, obviously, I've been in contact and uh, keeping in touch with, uh, with Drew, who's my agent. Mm -hmm. And there are some teams out there that uh, have created some interest. Mm -hmm. And uh, a few of those teams uh, asked to be anonymous. Uh, I know Seattle has come out and uh, said that they were interested. So mm -hmm. other than that, I'm just uh, we're just waiting for the right opportunity. I know last year we jumped uh we, we jumped on board with uh, with Buffalo, and mm -hmm. there, that was a team that was very interested in, interested interested in myself. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just felt like I always wanted to be where I was wanted. And Buffalo, you know, jumped at the gun at that, and so um, I spent my year in Buffalo last year. So uh, right now, are you surprised that you don't have a team in the first week of June? That I am. That I am. But I think uh, you know I'm not going to worry about it because I know. Uh, God has a place for me. He sure. has a plan for me. So I'm not really worried about that. I know I can still play. Um, I've heard, you know, a lot of the, uh, you know, reasons why I'm not in a team uh, on a team right now is because, you know, people feel that, uh, you know, I've disrupted some teams. I'm a cancer. I've heard all those things. And, you know, they've said that, you know, for the last five to six years. And uh, the teams that I've been on, if you ask uh, within that locker room how I've been as a teammate and as a person, you know, it's uh, it's contradictory to what's been displayed out there. So, what what would you say to a general manager that tells all the information men that are not only on this network but other networks that uh, we don't want T.O. because he would be a disruptive force? What would you say to those general managers? Well, I'm not that guy. I mean, I think uh, you know, obviously, with media outlets, they have their sources, anonymous sources, what have you. But if you go and you ask the, 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 the personnel, the coaches, the, and, and some of the players uh, that was in the locker room with me, you know, they'll tell you. Um, somebody, someone submitted uh, an email uh, to me the other day about what Ryan Fitzpatrick had to say about me as a, a teammate, uh, player, and as a person. And he had nothing but complimentary things to say about me. So uh, that in itself, you have to take that into account. What about the, uh, the word that you're pricing yourself out of the market? You're asking for too much money right now. No, I'm not pricing myself out of the market at all. That's, again, those are rumors. Um, again, if I'm going to be uh, brought in as a starter, then I would like to be compensated as a starter. Mm -hmm. um, Myself and Drew know that you know there are some factors uh, with that situation, and uh, would I be negotiable with those numbers? Of course I would. Mm -hmm. What about uh, the idea that you wouldn't be brought in to be the number one guy? Is that is that a, a, a scenario that you'd be amenable to to go to a team where well, you'd be the number one, number two? Uh, you know, my, I think with my ability, then yeah, I mean, like again. With the situation that was there uh, in Buffalo, I didn't consider myself a number one guy. Didn't you? Didn't hear me say a word about it. Right. So. Lee Evans was the number one guy in your estimation. So there, there. you have it. So uh, what about? See, because it, it is mystifying to a lot of people. You take a look at the numbers that you've put up, Terrell. I mean, they are ridiculous. They are they are yellow jacket numbers. There's no question about that. But yet here you are, at uh, your stage of your career. Uh, without a team in the first week of June, and you said you're surprised by that. I'd love for you to try and expound upon why you're surprised about that sort of well, thing. Well, because the thing is, like I said, it's not... I think why I'm not on a team is not because I can't play. It's, uh, it's based off character issues, and I think that's where the, the situation lies, and I, and I don't think it's fair. Um, as far as me being able to produce and perform on a football field, I can do that. That's, that's not a question. You ask any of my coaches from last year on that team, you ask even some of the coaches, you know, from the Dallas Cowboys, they'll tell you. You can ask some of the players. It's not that. Uh, the, situa the, 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 the scenario now is, is based on my character more so than the performance on the football field. Well, the character issues that you, to which you're referring, do you, do, you, do you think that there is no base to those uh, thoughts that might be in the in the general manager's mind. Do you think these are totally baseless, or do you think that there are some instances in your past that you regret that you, you undertook with some of your teammates or some of your other places that are is a chicken now coming home to roost for you trying to find a job right now? Well, I think uh, with some of the situations that have happened in the past, there's always two sides to a story. Um, with some, with those in, uh, instances and situations that that may be brought up, yeah, I can you know try to defend myself to the cows come home. And again, you know, me trying to defend myself 
uh, against the media and, and, and about the perception uh, of myself is like shooting a ghost. I'm not going to win that. I'm not going to win that battle. Mm -hmm. But I've always been confident in who I am and what I stand for, and those things that have uh, has a, has arisen or whatever. You know, they happen. There, there are some things that I wish I could have done differently. There are some things I wish I could have said differently. Mm -hmm. But nothing that I regret. You know, the, those are the things that happen with football. Um, you know, I'm not I'm not a criminal. I'm not any of that. Mm -hmm. um, but I know that the things that I do on the football field, they speak for themselves. So, again, some of those things in the past, yeah, they were in the past. But we're all in this world, you know, we, we that say put the past behind us and move forward. How can I do that? Well, I mean, did any of these issues come up when your visit to Cincinnati, for instance? Not at all. None of the, you weren't asked about any of these things by mm -hmm. Marvin Lewis and the rest of the uh, the crew there? Not at all. They were very pleased with me. I met with Marvin Lewis uh, the mm -hmm. first night, mm -hmm. and then the next day I met with uh, the owner, uh, met various people up there in the front, front personnel mm -hmm. in the management offices, uh, met with the receiver coach, met with the offensive coordinator, and they were pleased and you know i didn't get off the grounds good until you know i got a text message from 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 drew and said they had already signed antonio bryant so again uh, if if character was such an issue i don't think you know cincinnati would have brought me in brought you in so um could you play with mcnab could you play in washington dc with donovan you think of course i could um and i think what a lot of people don't know is that donovan and i have uh you know, we have squashed our, our, our issues. We've talked about them. We've moved on about it. When? Just when you see each other at, uh, yeah. at events at the Super Bowl and things like that? Or do you have, like, a one-on-one -on -one chat at any point? I mean, or? we've talked. Uh, I mean, I have his cell number. He has mine. Mm -hmm. We text messaged uh, when he got traded and went to... Um, uh, the, the Redskins, right. I wished him congratulations. And, you know, prior to that, you know, before he got traded, we uh, we just participated in Pros versus Joes, which will be airing pretty soon. So mm -hmm. it was myself, Donovan, and Antonio Gates uh, competing against uh, some in, uh, some NBA Hall of Fame guys, uh, Olajuwon, Rick Fox, and mm -hmm. uh, and Kenny Smith. So you had a good time with Donovan. Do you think, so Donovan, do you think Donovan could play with you? Do you think he would have a problem? Oh, not a problem, of course. I mean, he already knew his situation um, prior to being traded, so we talked about the idea of actually playing together. Is that so, right? So, I mean, that was something that, you know, I welcome with, with open arms and, and he as well. So, you know, if that was a situation to, to, to come about and happen, then, you know, we know what we can do on the football field together. So, would you, let's say things just transpire in this fashion. Uh, you've got to go to a training camp and earn a job. Would you, would, would you go do that? I don't have a problem with that. I've always earned my keep, you know. Uh, to get to where I am mm -hmm. now, you know, going to my 15th uh, season into the league, I've had to earn it. Mm -hmm. So I don't have a problem with that. If they want me to come in and run a 40, <laughs> I'll do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I so could give you some pointers on that to you, by the way. So it, 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 that's that's not a problem, right? So you you are uh, uh, open to any and all possibilities because a lot of people would think that uh, someone in your position might not be that you were going to draw the line at some point, and this is the circumstances under which you would take a job. But you no, would... not at all. I mean, I think you know, I, I say I'm surprised, but then again, I'm I'm not surprised because you know I know there's a process you know where uh, teams have drafted. Uh, you know, players, they're, they're looking at free agents. Um, they have to go through the mini camps, the OTAs, and then eventually into a training camp. And there are some things that, that may transpire. I mean, it's t 32 teams out there. So um, you, you never know what, what can happen. So uh, I'm looking forward to, to the opportunity of wherever, my, uh, wherever I may play. So how do you, last question before we take a break, and we'll talk about other issues in the NFL, including your reality show on VH1 that's coming on on July 11th. Uh, how do you see the scenario playing out? from here we're sitting here right at the end of the first week of june training camp is almost around the corner how do you see this playing out to you you know i'm just uh keeping myself in shape uh i'm not you know worried about me not going into a camp in shape i think the thing that's key is really being with the team uh learning that learning the system uh developing some chemistry with the offense uh, other than that um that that's that's the only concern but other than that, I can always, you know, hit it running. Just like uh, Brett Favre has done, you know, you really, you know, for a guy, you know, in, with my years in the league, you really don't need a whole lot of training camp, which could be advantageous to someone my, like myself. You seem real chill, T.O. You don't seem uptight about this. You don't seem angry. You don't no, seem anything like that. Not at all, because I know, you know, God is in control of all of this. No matter what, what has been said out there, you know, 
I know he has my back, and I'm in his hands, so I don't worry about that. Terrell Owens is here in the flesh on NFL Total Access. Where you been, man? It's been six years. You saw that. I mean, I, I, <laughs> I look like Jared Allen with a mullet since the last time you were in here.